What's good, everybody? Aversal here, back with a second episode of the scripting series. And I'm going to try to jump right into it as quick as possible, but I want to quickly recap what we did in the first episode and just make sure that I've cleared up any possible confusions that you might have from that, because maybe you might have been confused with concatenations or what an argument really is. I'm going to go over everything from start to finish within just a few minutes. If you're really comfortable with everything we did last episode, then you can go ahead and skip to the next chapter in the video. It should be in a timestamp. It should be in the description, if not on the video's actual timeline. But either way, the first thing that we talked about last episode was that everything in this Explorer tab is the organs, or sorry, are the primary organs of the game. In the game, it's just the game that you make, the game that people play. The game is playable because you have all of these things. You need all of these things in order for your game to run properly. Then we inserted a script into the server script service by right clicking, insert object, script, which is a server script. I did not tell you what a server script is, was, but I did not require that knowledge of you. The only thing I really told you to remember was that you should always put server scripts or the things with this icon, and it will say script when you first create it, into the server script service. Now, as for the Explorer, that's pretty much all we did. And then we kind of just jumped right into this whole print stuff. Now, I talked about what a string was and what a number was. Those two are what are called data types. And they are useful because we can convey numbers or text that we want to see. But there is a particular way of writing these data types called syntax. Syntax is just the language the grammar of Lua, the specific version of Lua, I'm not going to get into that, but let's just say it's the grammar of this language that we're speaking to do all the stuff that we did last episode, the stuff we're going to do in the future. That's what it is. Now, when we clicked on this print, we could say it says print string. And we found out that it does that because it auto detects what the argument is. And we said that it prints all provided values to the output, any number of arguments to be outputted. So another thing we found out was what an argument was. An argument is just a factor of our print statement. Hello world is one argument. And we also learned that to make more than one argument, you simply separate two data types with a comma and a space. And then we write the next data type. So I could say hello world banana or something, right? And we have two arguments. We also learned that we can have as many arguments as we want. So I could do comma five comma two comma hello. And what do you think is the number of arguments in this print statement? Take a guess. I'll give you a couple moments here. All right, so if you guessed five, you're correct. And I'll show you why. So the first argument is hello world. What data type is that? It's a string. Then we have a comma. So it says, OK, well, now we're going to the next argument. So the next thing we want to print. Oh, and another thing we learned is that when we put a comma between two arguments, there is automatically going to be a space between them when they print out into the output. So what's the second argument? It's a string again, and it's banana. We have a comma. Five, that's a number data type. Another comma. Two, another number data type. Then we have the last one, which is number five, which is a string data type. So we learned that we can have any number of arguments, and we learned two basic data types, a string and a number. Another thing we learned, which was useful, was concatenation. With concatenation, we can put two dots between two things that we want to print out, and we could do Bob, let's say. And what that's going to do is it's going to, sorry, I've been burping a lot. I don't know why. It's going to print out hello world and then dot dot. It's not going to print that out, but it's going to print hello world Bob. And it's not going to have a space next to the exclamation mark because it's not another argument. It doesn't do the same thing that a comma does. A comma puts a space between two arguments, whereas concatenation is one argument 
and it doesn't put a space between two data types that you use. So this is just going to print out hello world exclamation mark Bob, and it's going to be right next to the exclamation mark because there isn't a space because it's concatenation. And you can see there, hello world exclamation Bob. And that's how concatenation works. So you could say strings and numbers are part of our syntax. So if I say like print hello, that's not going to know what that is because it's not text. It's just an error. It says, look, unknown global hello. It basically, it doesn't know what to interpret this as. So this red line generally means improper syntax. You're not doing something correctly. So if I really wanted to print hello, I would do double exclamation and it would auto insert a string. So it's telling us that we're inserting a string as an argument and that's going to print hello. And likewise, if I did a number, let's say 63, it's going to auto insert a number because that's the data type that we're printing out. Oh, and I also talked about um, script one. So we talked about how to read the output. So this is our print statement. This is our script name. And this is the line after the colon. This is the line that the print statement executed on. Basically where it came from, like what line from what script. So I think that's about it. I believe that's everything I did in the last episode. Once again, I hope that makes sense. But without further ado, we're going to jump straight into today's lesson. And today we're going to talk about something very, very important. And it's called a variable. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So I'm going to open up my script here. So how do we create a variable in our script? Well, the first thing you always write for the time being is this word, local. Local, unfortunately, is not something I can explain to you until we get to something called a function. I previously mentioned it in the first episode, but really we're not going to be doing functions for just a little bit. Once we get there, I will bring up local again, and you'll get a better understanding as to why we use local when we create a variable. But for now, just know to dig it in your brain. Always write local before you give the name for a variable. So what do you think comes next? Well, the name, of course. So we're going to name our variable. I'm going to say I want apples, and we're going to set it equal to 5. So how many apples do I have? Five. A variable is just a name after this word local. You always put local, but app, this name that comes after local is going to be the name of the variable. Equals is what you're going to set this name to. And you can set it to any type of data. Now, that might not make complete sense, but it doesn't really need to because you're going to understand very quickly what you can set a variable to and what you can't. So cool. We made a variable. We called it apples and we set that name equal to five. Well, let's reintroduce our little print statement. So if you remember, it's print and you'll see it pop up actually on your screen print and there's going to, it's going to be highlighted blue. And if you click enter, it's actually going to auto complete the syntax for you. So now we can just type in whatever we want. So a string, a number, whatever. What do you think I'm going to do here? Well, wouldn't you believe it? You can actually insert your variable name into here. So let's try inserting this name into here. If we print apples, you'd say quickly, whoa, wait, wait, that's not correct syntax because that's not a string. And you're right, it's not a string, but we've defined it. That's the difference. If you've defined something, it's just going to be equal to whatever that name is equal to. So if it prints apples, what do you think it's going to print? Do you think it's just going to print apples? No, it's going to print whatever this variable is storing. What is the data that this variable is storing? Apples. It said, well, what's it equal to? Five. So what do you think print apples is going to do? Well, let's run. Five. Wait, we printed apples. Why didn't it print apples? Well, first of all, it's not a string. It's a variable. Otherwise, this would just be wrong. If we didn't define this, you would see that it actually turns red because that's incorrect. Apples is not defined anywhere. See, it doesn't know how to recognize. What is apples? I don't know what that is. It's not defined. 
So I'm going to undo that and we see it's no longer red because now we've defined apples. And it printed out 5, which is what apples is equal to. So it's pretty cool. We can use names to represent other types of data. And trust me, this, what I just showed you is going to be saving your life as you learn how to script better, okay? This is such a key aspect that all scripters abide by. Variables are so huge in scripting. You get used to variables, guys. Get used to them. All right, what else can I do as a variable? Well, let's let's go ahead and stop the game first here. So let's go back to our script and let's change the variable. Let's change the name too. Let's call it text. And I think you probably understand where I'm going with this. I'm gonna create a string. So local text, local is just the thing that we're gonna use. We're gonna keep using that. I'm gonna explain it later. What comes after local is the name of the variable. And this variable is just a name that's going to store a piece of data. And we're gonna set that data equal to whatever type of data you put here. And I, as you see, double quotations, that indicates a string. Let's just put Bob likes spaghetti. I don't know why I like the name Bob. It's just, I don't know. Anyways, as you can see, there's a syntax error. The script does not like that. Apples is not defined anymore. Why is that? Because the variable isn't called apples anymore. And so apples is not defined anymore. So let's change that name to text. So it's going to print text. And what do you think it's going to print out? Just imagine you're taking whatever text is equal to and you're just replacing text with whatever the text is equal to. So just imagine moving this string into here. That's essentially, it's essentially the same thing. That's what a variable does. It just, it's a placeholder. That's all it is. So obviously when we click run, we will get Bob likes spaghetti. <laughs> Great, he loves spaghetti, he really does. So. What else can we do? Well, believe it or not, we can do math. And math is gonna be another thing that you're gonna to have to do while you script. So, better get used to that. So let's say tech, or sorry, let's say equation. Let's say it's an equation. Equation is equal to two plus five. Do you see where I'm going with this? Let's go print. Oh, whoopsie. Now let's get that back into the proper format. And let's write equation as our variable name and let's print it, or sorry, let's put it into our print statement. So it's gonna print equation. What do you think is gonna happen? Take a guess. You're probably right. Let's go ahead and run. And what do you know? We can do math from a variable. It's crazy. Because all you're doing really is just replacing this with this. That's all there is to it. So that is basically all I really need you to know about variables for this episode. I hope it makes sense. It's just a name that you give some purpose. You give it a piece of data that you want to mess with later. You know, let's say you have a bunch of code and then you set this initially and then you have a bunch of gibberish, blah, 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 I'm writing code. And then you're like, okay, well now I wanna, I wanna get back to this equation. Obviously do not write this, write actual code. Um, <laughs> So now, okay, I think it's time we print our equation. And then it prints. So you can store it and then just use it whenever you want. And that's another thing. You can actually refer to equation by just writing its name, equation. And don't be confused. Think of local as the def initially defining the variable. And whenever you use it, after that, after it's defined, it is just going to use whatever you stored in this variable name, and it's gonna use that. So right now you could say that equation is equal to seven, right? So this would really just be seven. I'm writing seven, basically. Let's say seven is equal to itself. Seven is equal to seven. That's true. But then let's add one. What do you think that does? Let's go to the start. We define equation as a variable. The name is equation, and it's equal to two plus five. We can now use it without doing local because we're not defining it, we're just using it to do things with it. So equation is equal to equation, okay, sure, plus one. What do you think that does? Well, I'll tell you what it does. Let's print equation. Let's see what it does. What did it do? 
should be seven, right? Wait, no, it's eight. Why is it eight? Well, let me explain. This is a basically making me redefine equation. It's kind of like saying equation is equal to itself, which is seven plus one, which is eight. That's essentially what it's doing. It, it does the same thing because right here, two plus five is seven. Seven plus one is eight. And if we just did equation, it'd be writing the same thing. So we're not defining it. We're just redefining it. So you can actually change the value of variables, which is also super useful later on. Please remember this. Once again, none of this has to click immediately. This is stuff even a lot of people talk about later, but I think this stuff is just super important. And I wanna introduce, introduce this stuff to you guys early so that you have better intuition later on. So I know it may seem like I'm kind of hitting you on the head with the hammer quite a bit, really pounding this stuff down on you. But trust me, you don't have to understand all of this. Just get the basic idea. Let it sit in your head for a while, okay? Play around with printing. Play around with making variables. Because you can sit here and learn from these tutorials all you want. But at the end of the day, you got to put in the work and practice to really understand all this stuff and build up that memorization through repetition. So that's pretty much all I really want to do today. It's a little bit of a shorter episode, I think, uh, than yesterday. Because, I mean, I was kind of doing a lot of introduction yesterday, so... But variables are pretty quick, like, when it comes to just introducing them. Next episode is going to be a big game changer. Like, this is where we're really going to see stuff actually changing in the game. So, I hope you guys are excited. Thank you for sticking through. You've done yourself a service. Because now, next episode, we're really going to script. Okay? This stuff is all just preparing and figuring out the essentials before we get into what we really need to get into here. So next episode is going to be, let's say, a practical episode. So we're actually going to change stuff in the game. So I hope you guys are excited about that. So yeah, we basically recapped the last episode. Then we talked about what a variable was. We write the keyword local. Then we write the name of the variable. I could say variable one. And it's going to be equal to any piece of data that you want. So we could do a string, we could do a number, and there are other ways we can store variables, which we will talk about next episode, which is why I told, I'm told i telling you about them more in a pure sense than a practical sense, because next episode is where you're going to apply variables so that we can do some interesting stuff in-game. Oh yeah, and we also talked about, lastly, that we can actually change the uh, value of our variable. So we could say variable is equal to, well, let's just set it to itself, plus five. And if we print it, it's not going to be five anymore. It's going to be itself plus five extra because we're redefining it, right? So now it should be 10 when we run. And there you go. So that about wraps it up for variables. Um, hope this episode makes sense. If you like the video, please sub, leave a like. If you want to keep following this scripting series, it really means a lot to me. And once again, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will try to answer as soon as I can. But yeah, until next episode, which I'm really excited about. Hope you guys are excited. I will see you guys later. Peace.